Hi, in this devlog I will explain step by step how to make isometric world map scenes in Godot engine, so let's go. The first thing we need to understand is how straight lines work in isometric projection. And this is pretty easy as we only need to follow the simple rule of two pixels sideways and one pixel up or down. And this is everything there is to sketch simple rectangular shapes. I found super helpful to follow that rule by using this helper grid, which is simply a pattern of this 8x8 pixel square. And with this grid, we can create a wireframe cube just by connecting the edge points of two neighboring squares. But if we would simply fill in our wireframe shape with a single color, the resulting object kind of loses its 3D appearance completely. And to fix that, we simply need to adjust the lightness of the cube faces. But even for simple shapes, the selection of realistic values might be somewhat puzzling without any knowledge in art or shading. But no worries we can cheat a bit using Godot because, as you might know, Godot supports 3D rendering with an orthogonal viewport and this means that we can set up a scene that resembles an isometric pixel art view where the setting and the shadows are precisely calculated by the 3D engine. And just like that, we are able to get reference pictures for our pixel art scenes in different lightning conditions like in the morning, at noon or in the evening. Okay, so next I took the palette from my original 2D art and I started crafting isometric world map tiles, which are kind of isometric versions of the 2D tile map tiles I pixeled before. And then I added some crown texture to the tiles so that I can later lay paths along which a player can navigate from level to level. Okay, so now that we have the tile sprites ready, let's go to Godot and create the first isometric tile map. Here I first add a new scene and change the default type of node 2D to the tile map node. After that, it is important to set the tile map mode to isometric and set the cell size to be compatible with our tile sprite size. This gives us already an isometric grid where we can then later insert the tiles. So next, let's create a new tile set and import the tile sprites. I made here a manual effort and created new single tile for each sprite, which might get cumbersome if you have a larger set of sprites. So if you know a faster way to do this, please let me know. Okay, then back in Ghetto, we can already start laying the tiles, but as you can see, we have a problem here because there is this light y-axis offset in the original sprites. To correct this, we can simply toggle the centered texture option and this way we achieve the correct alignment of the sprites. As a final step for the tile map, we want to set up collision shapes so that the player can only move along the path parts of the tiles. Plus, one important point I found out while selecting the collision shape size is that you want the collision shapes of the individual tiles to line up exactly to avoid some jackness of the walls where the player could get stuck. So that's why I'm inputting the collision shape vertices manually. And so finally we have a complex isometric tile map where we can place tiles just like in traditional 2D tile map. And here I'm demonstrating how to make a simple cross section of two crossing parts. Uh, but I admit, without auto tiling, the tile map placement here takes a bit more time. 
which is still not too bad given that it's just about the ground and the path parts. Now, I'm a big fan of dioramas, so I decided to pixel a miniature versions of each four levels to the world map. And to start with, I simply screenshotted the good old tile maps and imported them into Azeprite as backgrounds so that I would instantly see how the dioramas feel on the map. And right here, I'm working on the climbing level diorama in a live stream which basically was a big copy and paste action once I had that basic tile shape done for that particular level. But unfortunately, as I imported the diorama sprites in Ghetto, the result was not quite what I was expecting. So after some googling, I came across with these Y sword nodes, which are included in Ghetto to fix exactly these sort of problems. So Let's first have a look at this example scene with an ordinary 2D node as the parent node. And here the player character is drawn always after the diorama sprite and so the player will be always on top of the diorama. Instead, if we change the 2D node type into Y sort node, the player will be drawn behind the diorama as soon as the Y position of the player exceeds the Y position of the diorama. While this is already an improvement, it still does not solve the problem entirely. But fortunately, the easy fix is just to adjust the Y offset value of the diorama sprite. And so finally, as we move the player behind the diorama walls, we get the result we wanted. After I was done pixeling the dioramas, I added some flowers and bushes here and there so that the map parts would not look that empty. And as a final touch, I drew this slimy monster thing to be the entrance to the jam level and added this fancy glow effect to its ingedo. So that's all there was to the isometric world maps. I hope this devlog was helpful to you and I'm looking forward to see you in a follow-up video. Cheers and bye bye.